your alternative talk radio contact, the planet, KGRARadio.com. Infinite complacency. People went to and fro over the earth about their little affairs, serene in the assurance of their dominion over this small, binning fragment of solar driftwood, which by chance or design, man has inherited out of the dark mystery of time and space. So yeah. you you are from Minnesota, right? Is that where you've always lived? And is it okay to say the state during the recording? Yeah, I live in Minneapolis right now. I'm an ER nurse. And uh, my two like Bigfoot-type encounters happened in Minnesota. Um, one was while I was living in Sioux Falls. It was like, they've been about like 20-some years apart. And uh, the Illinois, Southern Illinois is where the when I was about like four or five years old, when the uh, cornfield stuff took place. Well, yeah, no, I don't know if you want to go in succession or, you know, from uh, yeah, I was kind most of recent too. to, yeah, however you want to start is totally fine with me. Um, I know we can talk about uh, any of the ones that you brought up in your email. All three of them would probably be great if you wanted to. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the cornfield one was kind of like, a, you know, like one of those, long lost memories. Yeah. I think the last time I kind of even remember thinking about it is when Stephen King's movie came out, you know, children of the corn. Mm -hmm. Um, Cause when I heard the title, I'm like, Oh man, <laughs> you know, I got to see that. And then I was really disappointed in the movie cause I kind of felt like yeah. what happened to us was a little creepier. So is that maybe then what brought up the memory? Had you thought about it before? Yeah. Then? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I remember remembering it then, but then again, I forgot about it. And, and then, you know, it's like, uh, it was like about 20 years after that, like that was about 1982 or four, that movie came out. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, yeah, then, uh, so, okay, I guess I can kind of start like from the beginning. Again. So, uh, you know, the cornfield stuff happened when I was a kid, but you just block it out of your mind and you don't think of it again. Um, and then I remember my cousins introducing me to like the big muddy monster of Murfreesboro down in that area when uh, that was being seen. And I thought that was around 77, but I think I was around 73. Um, and I remember like we were playing and I, the only monsters I knew of was like Godzilla and Dracula and stuff like that. Right. So when we're out in the woods and they told me about the big muddy monster and it was real, they told me like a gorilla man. And uh, so I'm like, what? And then my other cousin's like, yeah, it's like Momo. And I'm like, Momo? And he's like, And yeah. again, you're you like, know, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're like, speak <laughs> English. Like, yeah, I know. And then they're like, well, that's like Bigfoot. And I'm like, Bigfoot? <laughs> 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 so all of a sudden, there's like these three monsters in the world. Yeah. You know, so, and my mom took me to see Sasquatch. I think that was around 77. That movie came out where the guys ride off into the wood, uh, woods looking and they reenact Ape Canyon and uh, the yeah. Roosevelt story and stuff. That's on Amazon, a uh, Prime, and I watched that uh, the other day. It was hard to get through, but <laughs> isn't it crazy what you can find on Amazon when you're you're yeah. like, there's no way that Amazon is going to have yeah. this, and they they always seem to have everything. It's insane. Yeah, and then uh, you know, like uh, the funny thing is, uh, um, when we my mom took me to see that in the theater when I was a kid because I made her, and I think she took my friend Alan with us. And when we came out, there was a postcard that you could get. There was a still from the Patterson Gimlin film. It was a picture of Patty. And on the back, it said, send $2 to the North American Wildlife Research Center. And then they would send you a series of reports and investigations. So I remember negotiating to get my allowance raised <laughs> to $2 that week. <laughs> That's cool. And, I, <laughs> and my mom helped me mail it off. And, you know, you're a kid, so you're like... 
man, it'd be so exciting. You know, you're, you're checking the mail every day and it seems like forever goes and finally it shows up. Do you still and have those like, reports? Oh, I wish I did. You know, I lost. We moved so much. Yeah, over. that's a long time ago. That's so cool that they, they were, things in yeah, the mail were always so exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And it was basically like typed out little like one to two paragraphs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, things and there's maybe like 10 of them you know but it was still cool to me that, like a, a bigfoot sighting newsletter all the way back then that's so cool so yeah and then you know i turn like 14 we're moving to south dakota and you can get your driver's license when you're 15 and you start high school so i forgot completely about bigfoot it's all about cars and girls and school and so i never even thought of bigfoot again you know until yeah. probably in the, about I think it was around 95 or 97 when uh, a buddy of mine invited me to come up to Minneapolis and we were going to go up to a buddy's cabin. And uh, that's where I kind of had the tree branch break off behind me. And yeah, then let's... that was when the internet was fairly new. So, you know, I got on and back then you had forums and then the beginnings of like the BFRO. So Right. And then it's basically like the Bigfoot newsletter just uh, online. And of course, with a whole lot yeah. more information readily available. We're really lucky yeah. to, so that, to actually live in the times that we do now, because considering the fact that a lot of people would buy those, you know, the UFO magazines, like the old one that uh, William mm -hmm, Barnes used mm -hmm. to do and all that to keep up on UFOs. And I mean, gosh, by the time you got a newsletter, the sighting was probably one or two months old, you know, whereas now yeah, it's like yeah. you can get right on and see if something happened yesterday. The cool thing about when I had that situation happen in uh, Minnesota at the lake, at the, 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 the bonfire thing, um, there was some active Bigfoot sightings taking place in Little Eagle, South Dakota. And that's, uh, it's not in the Black Hills where you would imagine. It's like the wow. the northern border of uh, South Dakota and North Dakota, kind of right in the middle. And it's like an Indian reservation in a, in a town there. And there was like a Bigfoot looking into like a person's trailer when they pulled up in their car. And then at the time, uh, like the police, like were chasing it in a field. I think they were, I don't wow. know if they were horseback or, or what. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that was like, wow, that was pretty cool. Um, and that's around the exact same time that you were there and had that experience. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, those are hundreds of miles apart. Right. Nothing to do with each other, but. Right. But it was pretty, pretty wild. Isn't that right yeah, around I, where they find a ton of dinosaur bones? I, that I don't know. Roots, I know they do I find them too. up there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, if you don't mind, let's start, uh, let's start with the oldest one uh, first then. And basically the, the title of the show, you know, the children of the corn. Yeah. <laughs> um, this one, uh, I don't know if this one creeped me out more or the, the other one uh, because of the, uh, the, the cry situation. Um, because oh, I've heard yeah. so yeah, many they're... things about that, uh, but anyhow, sorry, I'm I'm already taking you off track. But yeah, let's start with the no, no. the the children of the corn section first. Yeah, well, uh, kind of back what we like we were talking about, like um, the the like uh the cornfield thing. You know, recently I've heard someone else mention that, yeah. and then that's kind of what brought that up with me. And then um, the baby crying. I just was watching. I don't know if it was a. Sasquatch Chronicles or a lot, but someone talked about um, hearing a baby crying, and I'm like, wow, okay, so that's not unusual. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and actually, you know, when I was out in Washington State with uh, with Wes and and Kirk Brandenburg uh, and the Browns, we played a baby cry uh, for. Wow. It took like I, I can't remember. I, I'd have to go back and read exactly what I wrote because the times of things always get jumbled, but. Either for, I think it was around forty-five minutes to maybe just over an hour, maybe more, until a phone died. Like we were just playing a, a looped uh, YouTube of audio mm -hmm. of a baby crying. It was so annoying. You just want to pull your hair out. But we're like, well, let's give this a shot. And sure enough, we did have something come in that actually we all agreed it whooped and it sounded more feminine. If you can attribute, you know, such uh -huh. a thing to a sound, but it did sound feminine. But anyhow, uh. Derek Randalls of the Olympic Project, one of his, I, I need to get him on and just have him tell the story. I know he's told it before and maybe you've heard it, but he went hiking alone. He was, he was in BFE somewhere just really deep in the bush. He played a baby cry and then it was, he said it was one of the most terrifying experiences of his entire life and he will never, ever, ever, ever do it again. So, wow. uh, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if. Yeah, he, that freak, that. 
that happened last my situation where that happened last august and i mean it creeped me out and, and the other stuff is what really freaked me out and made me like I guess because I always kind of thought of myself as a skeptic, you know, I, mean, uh-huh. I was always, you know, I was a Bigfoot enthusiast ever since I was a child. Um, and I never even put the cornfield thing together till later. And I did have a chance recently to talk to my sister about that, too. Oh, cool. And she kind of right. led me led me off in a different direction. I oh. mean, I, well, why don't well, you I tell mean, the story? Let, let, let's tell uh, the story first. And then I want to hear what your sister, yeah, what her, yeah. her thoughts were on this all these years later. Okay. So, um, I'm, I'm guessing this is probably around like 1972 or 73 that this happened. Um, we lived around St. Louis, uh, as my mom and my sister and me and our family's from the Southern tip of Illinois, uh, down by like the Ohio river and the Shawnee national forest. And, um, anyway, my grandma and grandpa had lived out on an acreage, um, and out in the country and, uh, every year my parents would get two weeks paid vacation and we would do one week vacation with each other, you know, as a family, we'd go to like silver dollar city or, or, um, dog patch or someplace kind of fun like that. But then, uh, my mom and dad would drop us off at my grandma's and the grandpa's and, uh, then they would take off on their motorcycle for a week. Yeah. And we didn't always stay out there by ourselves. Um, a lot of times we'd go to stay with other cousins or other, you know, family that lived around the area. And my grandfather had recently died. And so, like I said, I was about four or five myself, my sister's two years older. So that makes her about seven. And then, uh, so my grandma, after my grandfather died, worked as a cook at a hospital about 25 miles away. So she would go to work and we'd be out there on the anchorage by ourselves. And uh, should I describe, like, the acreage a little bit to kind yeah. of give people an yeah, idea? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Thank you. All right. So the house faced west, and the gravel road that led to it was in the front. It was probably about 10 acres. And uh, on the north side of the house, there was that's where the guest bedroom was. There was a mulberry tree. Behind the house facing east was, like, a septic tank and then some gooseberry bushes. And behind that were some sheds where, at some point... My uh, grandfather had had some pigs. The south side of the house, there was a well, and then there was a pole barn. My grandfather was a tinker. He helped people fix their farm equipment and stuff like that. So it was full of old like farm equipment, and we were never really allowed to go in there because it was kind of sharp stuff. And um, after he passed, you know, it was just pretty much empty. Um, so uh, right on the edge of that pole barn on the corner was a huge tree with overhanging branches in front of that was the burning barrels. Um, it was just on the South of the pole barn and that tree was a cornfield. Now it's not a big square cornfield. It's like a uh, kind of rolling Hills and there were woods. So back in the day, farmers cleared out the areas for their cornfields. So they're kind of oblong shaped. Mm-hmm. I would say this one was kind of like a football field. Um, and then there's like a row of, woods with a tractor path to the other field just a little bit on the other side of that Mm. so and did you guys still have the the pigs were gone but did were there still any animals at all there no there were no other animals okay and uh yeah and this was like in the days of like the only thing you had was like a rotary dial telephone right (laughs) and uh my i had the number for my grandma's you know like work and stuff like that it was like they wrote it down on paper next to the phone or you could call (laughs) the operator back back then right and so even though we were out there by ourselves you know it's like i guess some people would like that's kind of (laughs) weird two kids out there a little different back then though uh, it was it was more acceptable and you're out in the boonies right so it seems safer yeah 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 but anyway uh you know like siblings you'd get on each other's nerves and Mm -hmm. stuff like that so i was off kind of doing my own thing and i noticed that my sister wasn't around so i was like well where the heck is she you know so i started calling out for her and uh i keep calling out for her and finally she comes out of the cornfield next to the tree and the burning barrels and stuff like that. And she's kind of winded and she's kind of got a, like a smile on her face and I could tell she was having fun. So I was like, Hey, I, you know, what are you doing? I want to have fun too, you know? And she's like, well, I'm playing 
with the, the children in the corn. And I'm like, well, what kids? Cause there were no kids around there. It wasn't until a couple of years later, our parents got us like a mini bike and we could drive up the roadways to where there were some kids and stuff like that. But back then, you know, it's like, it was just the two of us when we had to stay there all day. So I'm like, well, I want to play with these other kids. You know, it's just like, well, come on, you know? So we go into the cornfield and, uh, so I'm like, well, what are we doing? And she goes, come here. And we run up and then we drop, and she has us drop down low and we're just sitting there. She goes, listen. And I'm like, okay. So I'm sitting there and we're listening and you could hear footsteps and they would kind of like come up the row, like a little ways away. You couldn't see them because the corn was, you know, pretty much fully grown and stuff like that. And we'd just sit there and we'd hear them come a little bit closer and a little bit closer. And then she's like, now, and she jumps up and she bursts through the corn and I go with her and we go to where we thought we heard the footsteps and we get there expecting to see kids, but there's nobody there. And I say kids cause they were kind of like smaller footsteps. It wasn't like anything mm. huge, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, so then we drop down again and we listen and they come closer and we do this for a while and we're laughing and having a blast. And uh, somehow, I don't know if we chose to separate, you know, to try to flank them or if it just happened. But I kind of got off by myself and I would hear the footsteps and I'd go running toward them. And the whole time I'm like calling out and trying to get them to like tell me their names or let me see them and stuff like that. And, and it's nothing. And then uh, I get farther away from the house, almost to the wood line. And uh, it starts, I start noticing that these kids aren't seeing anything, you know, and I'm like, okay, you know, and uh, it starts getting weirder and I'm starting to get a little bit scared. So then I turn around and I start heading back to the house and I could hear the footsteps coming up behind me and then kind of off to the side of me mm. and it's scaring me even more. So I start calling out and, uh, you know, frantically for my sister and it was my go-to thing. And, uh, I start making a way toward the house and she shows up right in front of me and like, she's mad at me cause you know, she wants to play and I'm wanting to go back to the house and so I'm crying and I'm all upset and stuff like that. And, and I remember her being mad at me because, you know, it's like I ruined everything. That's right. why she didn't want me to come play with them, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so we finally get back to the house. And as we're coming, like, out of the corn or something like that, I'm like, well, who were these kids? You know, how, you know, it's like we never saw them. They never seen anything back. She goes, well, of course not because they're Indians. And I was like, what? <laughs> you know, and she's like, yeah, they're Indians. And I'm like, well, why are they Indians? And she's like, well, because I saw their footprints and, you mm. know, they were barefoot. And, you know, and of course, you know, you're a kid, the only Indians you ever saw were on old Westerns, you know, and they always had like the, the, uh, scout that translated, you know, right, so I'm right. like, oh, let's go. So my, my brain totally accepted it. You know, it's like, oh, you know, Indians, of course, they didn't speak English and, uh, you know, maybe they should have been wearing moccasins or something. But I, I was like, hmm, you know, <laughs> made perfect sense to me you know that was kind of what i i remember that so do you remember um talking to your grandma or your parents about this incident or because it got explained by your sister then you're like oh okay well it's not so weird maybe it was like yeah i mean it was totally like oh well that's that's solved you know that's over you know And, uh, you know, I mean, she was two years older, so she was <laughs> Right, right. You looked up to her. She knew what she's talking about. She's so like, oh, okay, yeah. cool. When I read that part uh, with the whole, uh, once you were like, I think you said something along the lines of, well, yeah, they were Indians because the there was footprints. She saw the footprints and they were barefoot. I, I think my mouth's like, okay, there you go. <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> so, yeah. And that's an interesting so, part, though, that I didn't I didn't know about that these weren't heavy thuds of maybe what we would consider an adult, uh, but they were uh, much lighter. So yeah, they, they were really fast, ones. and and mm. it was like uh, yeah, it was strange, you know. And then I, I guess you know I tried to ask her like she came through town uh, a while back. She mm-hmm. came from Sioux Falls to Minneapolis, and then she was going to go down to see my mom. And so I'm sitting there, and I'm like. Well, when we went out to eat, my wife had to work and I'm like, I started asking her about it. And of course she's like, ah, she doesn't really remember that much about it. She goes, but yeah, the cornfield always creeped her out. Mm. And, uh, so then I asked her what she remembered about it. And, uh, and she said, well, um, she remembers, 
one time, like uh, grandma and her were taking food out to the pole barn because there was a cat in there that had kittens. So she went with grandma to the barn and grandma left some scraps. And of course, you know, after she left the scraps, she went back to the house. And my sister, you know, she stays behind because, of course, you know, kittens and she's in there playing with them. And uh, she said she came out of the door and the door was by um, the big tree would be off to your right as you came out the door and the burning barrels would be like right in front of you. And she said she came out of the door. And as soon as she came out the door, she stopped because something told her to. And she was sitting there and she could kind of see the tree in her peripheral vision and she said there was kind of like a a really big dark shadow that she didn't want to look at and so she didn't and uh she's sitting there for a second and then finally she turned toward it and then it moved off like past the tree and then back behind the pole barn where she couldn't see it and she said it moved so fast that she almost questioned if she saw anything Mm -hmm. and, but it scared her. So she ran to the house. And from that point on, she was always kind of scared to to go over by that like tree. So, and then I had uh, like one time my mom and dad were there and uh, it was like nighttime when we done, when we got done eating and my grandma was going to have me take the garbage out to the burning barrels and it's dark. And uh, they had the, uh, I guess they, the street light on a pole down toward the gravel road in the driveway, but that corner of the pole barn would have been shadowed by it. So it was kind of dark and I'm walking with the, the garbage and part of this cause it's just a kid being scared of the dark. But as I was walking toward the burning barrels with the garbage, as I was getting closer, I was getting scared and scared and uh, I wind up just chucking the garbage in the general direction of the barrel <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and beating it back to the house. And uh, you know, the next day, well, Granny Grace was quick with the switch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, she I wasn't too pleased missed. with me chucking the garbage. Yeah. You're like, yeah. well, um, kind of got freaked out a little bit. But so- here's the thing that my sister shared with me that um, I didn't, I never knew about. And I, she thought she had told me about it before. But uh, um, one time when my parents were there and stuff too, it was like earlier in the day, she went off into the cornfield and she said she was going through the corn and she came to this open area that was like the corn was all kind of smashed down. And she said it was kind of smashed down and it was like in a, almost like a perfect kind of circle. And it was about like 10 feet uh, diameter. And she said, as soon as she came into that, she's like, well, this is weird. And she, you know, she's looking down and it looks like the, the corn was purposely like kind of pushed down. Mm. And as soon as she got there, she, so she's just like, oh, I'm tired. I'm going to take a nap. So she starts to lay down and she you know, lays down on the corner. She's like, well, what am I doing? This is stupid. So she jumps up and she runs back to the house. And when she gets back to the house, my mom's upset. And my mom's upset because she'd been gone for several hours. <gasps> no and, way. <laughs> and my sister, to her, she'd only been gone a few minutes. <laughs> oh um, what the hell is that? <laughs> yeah. So I was like, what? <laughs> so she did lay yeah. down and go to sleep. But of course, why did well, she get sleepy well, right no, there? She, well, she said she didn't think she did. She said wow. so she started laying down. She remember thinking, this is stupid. Well, why am I laying down? Why am I going to take a nap? Oh she goes, she, she just started to like just lay down on the ground. And then she bolted right up and ran to the house. Like, that's the way she remembers it. So she just yeah. told you this not too, too long ago? This about like after you first sent me the first email back, as she came down. Well, she went down. We like she likes to go down there um, around uh, Memorial Day, so it would have been over right right before the Memorial Day weekend that she she came. What else did she say about this? I mean, when she really looks back, does it freak her out? Does she have any theories? Or yeah, oh, she yeah she you know and then yeah that's and then she also uh, said that one time like when we did get the mini bike later on. Um, we would kind of fight over it. If we were around the house, we would take turns, you know, riding it back and forth, but it would be one person's, one of ours, uh, day to actually have it. Right. And so she, it was her day. So she took off down the gravel road and went for a ways and this is out in the country. And, um, she saw an old house like in the woods. And so she 
like goes up to the old house and stuff like that. And she goes, and when she got there, she's walking around the house and she goes, you were with me. Right. And I'm like, no, <laughs> she goes, yeah. Cause somebody was in the house with me. And I'm like, Oh God. No. <laughs> and I'm like, do you remember me? Cause we, I burned my leg on the muffler really bad once. So I never ever wanted to ride behind anyone again. Yeah. You know? Um, so, and then she goes, yeah. And she goes, uh, and she goes, and something happened. And, uh, it was another deal where she kind of lost time. Um, she thought maybe the kickstart thing from the mini bike hit her in the head. Um, uh, cause mm. she said she remembered like waking up and like not understanding, you know, what had happened and <laughs> back on the bike and came home. I but mean, that's a whole could, like, another, she, 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 holy cow. Yeah. And she's like the whole time she was going through the house, she's like, yeah, there was someone in the house with me, oh. you know, and she like, she was thinking it was me, but. So, yeah. Cause so her brain chose to put place you there with her but you're like i was mm -hmm. not there yeah with you. yeah no i'm like no i that's not me <laughs> oh boy yeah. what so, the hell is that then i don't know i've never had any time loss stuff but <laughs> wow uh, but yeah and i was like you don't remember anything about the cornfield she's like kind of you know she goes i remember you were scared of it <laughs> and, yeah uh, and, and it sounds like for us, damn good I, I, reason yeah and then and anytime it was dark neither of us wanted to be near that tree uh, or that corner of mm. uh, the pole barn. You know, and it was really dark in that corner too, you know, but. Uh, that reminds me a lot of, uh, did you get a chance to listen to the episode where uh, Christopher talked about the boulder field and how he was being followed and flanked by some, some things. And then he, he got to this boulder field and even though he really felt like he was in some kind of mortal danger he felt like he had to lay down and go to sleep. And he actually did fall asleep for a time, I think. Um, and it was the same thing. It was yeah. like mi kind of like missing time. And then, you know, yeah. even though, you, you know, it's a ridiculous place to take a freaking nap. Like your sister was in the middle of a cornfield with stamped 10 foot diameter. Also interesting. Uh, <laughs> it's about the right size. I mean, let's just be yeah. honest here. Yeah. Um and then, you know, him feeling like, oh, I'm I'm just, I'm in mortal danger, but I'm going to lay down on this damn boulder and go to sleep. And you're like, well, that didn't sound very comfortable. Plus, you were in mortal danger. It's just, what is this sleepy time <laughs> uh, thing? What is that? Well, it's like missing 411 stuff or something. Yeah, when she was at the house, too, she said the reason she thought she hit herself in the head with the kickstart thing is because she had a, a gash on her forehead. <gasps> um, what? But, but I'm trying to figure out, I'm like, I even told her, I'm like, how did you... Because the kickstart, the way you'd, you'd have to hold on to the handlebars and then you use your leg to right. kick down. I'm like, what hit you face on the head? Down there. <laughs> yeah, how would your face get all the way down there? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out mechanic wise how you know, like how is that possible? That jump forward and hit you in the head, you know? I mean, you have to be falling face forward into something like that, like you were passed yeah. out or passing out, yeah. and then you just smashed your your forehead on. That's a really uh, painful thing to do. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, face meets a uh, kickstand or, or, uh, anything like that would be brutal. I don't know. That seems like that's a whole nother, uh, subject, which yeah. I didn't even know we were going to touch on. That's so cool. I mean, well, no, I mean, no. And I, and I didn't either until I sat down and talked. Yeah, to no, that's like, awesome. Um, oh. I wonder, I mean, hypnosis is, uh, it's an iffy you know subject, but, and I think that most yeah. of us, most people, including myself would be like, well, would I really want to go under hypnosis and find out exactly <laughs> what happened? Probably not. Yeah. Mm, That's interesting that she told you, though. It's really cool of her to do that. Yeah. And you know, I'm like, this is nothing to do with what I was hoping you would remember. <laughs> right. You're like, wait, what did you like, just say? You're not helping my narrative. What I remember was this. <laughs> right. You're like, I yeah. was just, I was thinking big hairy things running yeah, around in yeah. the woods, and now we're talking about something else. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, like her seeing that shadow thing, I'm like, that one kind of, you know, right. that one reminds me. But but then the, the, yeah. And then when I first, when she first mentioned the, the wallowed out area in the cornfield, like thing, uh, right there, I'm thinking, oh, okay. And then I started thinking, well, wait, did deer do that? You know, but I was like, hmm. Well, see, but yours, sure, so. if, if you haven't heard it, uh, I would love for you to hear it and, and see what you think. Uh, I don't think that was for just the insiders. Maybe it was. If, if it is, I want to get that to you so you can hear it.
uh, specifically because of what your sister just told you. But the yeah. similarities are incredible just because of the fact that, you know, he's thinking it's some kind of an animal. And what ends up happening mm. is he gets sleepy enough to want mm. to lay down. And mm. so, you know, instead of going, oh, well, of course, it's Bigfoot and aliens or and this or and that. Mm. What if maybe it's just some kind of a uh, level of infrasound that they can put out? Uh, mm-hmm. and, yeah, and, yeah. Maybe and she make was you like, tired they're like or... into their space, you know. And they, right, right. They didn't like it, so yeah. Because she could. I mean, obviously, what I was getting at with and what you were getting at with ten foot diameter, it seems like mm-hmm. some kind of a bedding area for maybe a bigfoot. Mm-hmm. So yeah, maybe she just walked into the quote unquote their bedroom and and they were like, "What the mm-hmm. crap is this <laughs> human being yeah. thing they're doing?" And maybe they could just put out some kind of an infrasound to make us feel sleepy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah, know was... um, why she would not remember. Well, I don't know. I mean, going to sleep is not always something you remember doing. So maybe she really did but she, just fall but asleep. But she said she didn't fall asleep. You know, that, yeah, that's, that's so weird, though, it, too. Yeah. yeah, and then you yeah. get there and your parents are pissed. You're like, what's your problem? <laughs> I yeah, because right you couldn't figure out why your mom was so mad. Right. Yeah. After hearing this and having a little t- time to mull it over, I mean, what are your thoughts on on what happened to your sister? <laughs> I, I I don't know. Like I said, it was just kind of a weird, you know, thing that happens when you're a kid and you don't even remember it until like something comes along. Like I said, when I heard about the Stephen King thing, Children in the Corn, <laughs> yeah, you know, this is in the '80s. I'm like, whoa, yeah, okay, yeah, cornfields yeah, like, are scary. <laughs> cornfields suck, man. <laughs> Stay the hell out of them. Um, yeah. I just, oh, I'm just trying to mull it over and, and what all that could be, but I'm just trying to not no, go that off totally, the rails I, with I had it. No, I, I had no um, idea of those things until after I'd sent you the email. Yeah. Because you know, then I was oh, like, cool. and then I talked to her. Because I, I was excited because I, I told her about what happened to me last August. And, yeah. And, uh, you know, she was really excited about it and stuff like that. And it never triggered anything like that at that time. Wow. You know? And when I told her, I was like, I reached out and like, to you and your show and stuff like that she was like oh yeah you should definitely tell that 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 was you know strange and i'm like but i also remembered and then i went back into that and she's right. kind of like she remembers me not liking the cornfield and that's part of the reason sometimes she would go in there is because she knows i wouldn't follow her um <laughs> she wanted to be left alone she's like mark i'm done with you i'm going <laughs> yeah. into the corn that's how much i want to yeah. have a break from you is there any recent stuff with her and missing time since she's had it and you haven't or yeah, yeah. Just that, huh? And then the the strange yeah. incident with the motorbike. Mm-hmm. What yeah. was it like? A little like a little fifty or something? A little fifty. The eighty Suzuki. Okay, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know how head comes to contact with certain areas of a bike like that and not being able to remember um, yeah. what happened. That that would freak me out pretty bad too, actually. Um, oh, so is that still in your family at all? that that area uh no no okay uh, it w- was a little while after that my grandma finally moved into an apartment in t- town yeah. and and grandma never has mentioned anything strange like uh, no and she passed away a long time ago too so yeah. but uh no we never talked about anything yeah she, uh we were raised uh my grandma was pentecostal so she didn't uh have time for nonsense <laughs> right right yeah right yeah, yeah I, I understand that um yeah. well and plus i think most adults do try to diffuse a situation and the last thing that they would yeah. want to do is scare some kids so mm. scare their grandkids like oh well i like when you come out here so i don't want to tell you that there's a uh, you know uh aliens and ghosts and bigfoot and shadow people and all this other stuff so yeah that probably wouldn't come up no well, um, well, let's go now to the uh, the Little Eagle area, South Dakota, if you don't mind. And you said this was in or somewhere in ninety five, well, right? Well, that was just something that I, I read about um, after kind of what happened to me. I, I, I never was there during that time. Uh, it was oh, I'm sorry, not the 90, South Dakota. 90. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your your cabin yeah. incident. I'm sorry, the cabin incident. Yeah. Where where was this exactly? Is this in Minnesota as well? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, I drove up to the cities. I wasn't living here at the time. And a buddy of mine, you know, was like, Hey, we're going to go up to my friend's cabin on the lake. And, uh, so we, it was probably like four or five of us that went up there, including the guy that owned the cabin. And it's, I want there's so many lakes and I'm not from the area. 
I want to say that we went into Moose Lake, uh, the town, and ate at a steakhouse and then went back to the cabin. Um, and it wasn't like a roughing it kind of cabin. Um, it w- was like not right on the lake, but you know, he crossed the road and his dock for his boat was in this like little alcove of the lake kind of thing. Um, but anyway, this cabin, I would want to say, uh, anyway, the, the cabin uh, to the east of the cabin, there was like a cleared out area of the woods where they had their fire pit. And straight across from that was like a little shed where they kept implements to take care of, you know, the cabin and stuff like tools and that. And um, so that night, you know, we got back, we'd started a bonfire and we're sitting there and there was some sporting event on and I'm not a sports guy. So uh, all the other guys had ran into the house to kind of watch the sporting thing. And I could hear them in there cheering and stuff, but I just kind of enjoyed being out by the fire. So the cabin would have been off to my left. Um, the fire and that was in front of me. And then the shed was on the other side of the fire from me. And my back was to some woods and there's like woods kind of on like all the other sides. So I don't know how much time I was out there, like 20 minutes, 30 minutes or so by myself and just enjoying listening to the, you know, crackling of the fire and just being out there and, uh, something happened. The game must have ended and that. So all the guys come, you know, out of the house and they're pretty excited and pumped up. And the owner of the house goes, well, I know what this party needs. So he runs into the shed. And when he comes out, he's holding a Roman candle. And my first thought is, okay, isn't it kind of dry? I don't think you should be shooting fireworks <laughs> right? off in the woods. But anyway, so he, he lights it. And as soon as the first like flare shoots up, it's like, Phew. I didn't even get to see the fireworks because I thought a tree was coming down on me. I mean, I heard this like huge like branch like break. And I literally thought I was going to get crushed. So I'm like, I duck and I flinch and look behind me. And of course, you know, the fire had taken my you know, night vision. So all I saw was blackness and I heard like a dun, dun, dun. and I guess, you know, I'm, I'm not, it sounded like three steps, but I felt them as much as, as like I heard them. And, you know, like we grew up on an acreage with horses and like when a horse gets spooked and it like jumps away, you know, the hoof hitting the ground, yeah. you know, I mean, this wasn't like a horse as far as like, you know, like four hood, you know, things, but it was like the weight, you know, of, in the ground, you know, it's like, boom, 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 going away. And, uh, and, then, and then right away, you know, they're all watching the fireworks still and like laughing and cheering. I turn, I'm like, did you guys hear that? You know? And they're like, what? And I'm like, there's something behind me. And they're like, then they start making fun of me. Oh, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, 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 oh raccoon, you know? <laughs> I'm like, oh, that was a pretty big raccoon. <laughs> yeah. You're like, that's a special <laughs> raccoon. And then I'm sitting there like, well, what in the hell could be that big and that close to me? You know, it's like just sitting there and I'm like, mm-hmm. um, well, and then after that, you know, um, you kind of hear like, dogs barking and yipping i don't know maybe i don't want to i don't think they were coyotes and that but they were kind of off in the distance like to the right mm. and then and then i could hear them again and then they were like a little bit to the kind of like that would have been the east and they're a little bit to the the northeast and then they were off in the distance like north so, but, but the whole time i'm freaking out because i'm like there was something behind me you know, that time. And when I listened to like uh Kumbo and bear and stuff like that, they would talk sometimes about like uh counting coup, <laughs> you know, how like the Indians would like sneak up on their enemy and like touch them and then go away without right. anyone knowing. And that's kind of what I was thinking. I was like, man, cause you know, and then I started looking like, like do bears go up to campfires <laughs> at night? And, right. You know, or, you know, I don't think it didn't, like I said, it didn't sound like a deer or anything like that. It was three distinct thud, 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 moving away rapidly. Well, and it does seem like if the Roman candle hadn't have been lit, that yeah, it probably yeah, wouldn't I mean, have even was... run, ran away from what you guys had going on. It does make you wonder how often many of us are out here in the woods and we actually might have something watching us. And without frightening it or it needing to leave the area... It just stays there, and we we would never know. Yeah, and so that's when I kind of went off the deep end, and then the whole like uh, 
Bigfoot passion like resurged, you know, um, from my childhood and that. So then from that point on, I was going on the internet and like looking at forums and the BFRO and stuff like that. And, Do you so. think that maybe at least one of your friends actually did hear the footsteps, the three thuds moving away that night and just didn't admit it because they didn't want to be made fun of? I, I don't think so by the way they were making like fun of me and stuff like that. And yeah. They were like, they were all Jerks. like, they were, <laughs> their adrenaline level was way higher than mine. You know, yeah. I've been kind of like just in a meditation, kind of like just out there by myself and they were all amped up from the game and stuff like that. So when yeah. they came charging out, it was like, you know, I kind of regretted them coming out just because of like, ah, you know, I was enjoying the peace and quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so, so was the Bigfoot, obviously. <laughs> yeah, he was, you know, they really he screwed that up. Was... <laughs> yeah. That's a cool story, though. I mean, did you, like you said, after that you really plunged headlong into Bigfootery? Yeah, but yeah. did you go into the woods and maybe uh, much of the substrate well, in the U.S. is not conducive for footprints? But was there any yeah. evidence? So, did you go looking? I rem- I remember the next day, you know, it's like I get up in daytime and I kind of went walking out and, and looking at that area and, uh, you know, I didn't see anything that looked unusual. Yeah. Uh, Did you find the branch that came, came off the tree? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it wasn't as big as I thought it was, but mm-hmm. it was, you know, I'd say what, about two, maybe three inches around. I mean, I could almost like put my hand around it. But yeah. I, I thought half a tree was coming up. And down right. Me. But it was a was it alive, a living branch, or was this some kind of deadfall that could have come off easily? Um, yeah, that I don't really remember. I'm yeah. not a huge outdoors guy either. So, but uh, especially no, I mean, after I just, stuff I'm like this, there. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, I heard that snap. And I'm like, holy, like you know. Yeah. I would have been too. Well, and I'm not saying that it was just deadfall and then the footsteps no. happened to be there. I do think they're connected, but it, I just was wondering if it came off, you know, easily or if, you know, it produced maybe a louder sound because it was a living part of a tree um, that yeah. is, is harder to bring down, obviously. So that's interesting. Yeah, mm. yeah between that and the corn, I got to tell you, I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, and I used to be skeptical of anybody, like, when I was, like, a Bigfoot enthusiast, you know, younger, you know, I'm like, I always liked the stories, like, the sighting, and, you know, it's like, a, it's a, like, some undiscovered hominid, or, or mm-hmm. like, an, some kind of an ape, or something like that, and I didn't like anything to do with paranormal, I didn't like anything to do with UFOs, you know, that stuff's crazy, you know, and, uh, I mean, I kind of still believed in like UFOs and stuff too as much, but at the same time, I didn't like mixing them because to me that kind of diluted it or something. And, uh, you know, and, and anybody that had multiple encounters, I'd be like, well, come on, that's like lightning striking, you know, and hitting you. But I never once thought of the cornfield thing, you know, and then that, you know, at the same time until kind of recently. Yeah, now look at you, you damn nutso. <laughs> Well, yeah, I know. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and then that would have been in, that would have been in like '95, and uh, you know, this last incident was 2018. So, I mean, yes, yeah, so and I, you know, and I'll admit, I'm the zany, you know, like Bigfoot guy, you know, at work and stuff, you know, and then because it's you know, it's you know, either talking about cars or or Bigfoot and that, you know, I'm, I'm like, that's what kind of made the the thing last August kind of weird, you know. So. Yeah, let's let's cover that because this one's also extremely interesting, especially uh, with my own experiences with sounds like this and what it can mm-hmm. produce. And then, you know, the other side of it is your side of it. Uh, you weren't playing a baby cry. At, well, I'll let you tell. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, I don't really know the sounds of like animals and in, in the woods and stuff like that either. But you know, being in a a nurse, you know, I'm used to hearing babies cry. <laughs> so, but, um, we, me and like two other guys, uh, had decided to go on a four day hiking trip in, in, uh, the Superior hiking trail in uh, Northern Minnesota. And we put in around Crosby Manitou, I think is where we kind of started. And the original plan was we were going to camp at this Sanju Lake, um, we were hiking and we kind of got distracted and there the guy even told us when we got on the trail we'd come to a gravel road 
and we would have to follow the gravel road down a ways um, in order to pick up the trail again. So the first leg of the, the journey, you know, we get into the woods and we're hiking and I'd bought a GoPro, um, but I wanted this to be like a no technology kind of trip. So I even told my wife, I'm only going to turn my phone on when we get to the campsites and like send you a text that we're there and then turn it off again. And I would only like film with my GoPro little bits here and there, you know, like if we were like, I would show my campsite and then if we saw like a scenic overview, I would turn it on and right. take a picture. And that. But anyway, so we get um, to the gravel road and when we get to the gravel road, you know, it's kind of like, and this could totally have been, so we heard like three wood knocks or like three, like pounding on a nail or something. But to me, it sounded like, you know, kind of, I almost jokingly said, Oh, uh, you know, cause I'm the Zany Bigfoot guy. Look, uh, wood knocks, you know, mm-hmm. but, uh, but there's only like three of them and it wasn't more, but you know, the one guy was a marathon runner and the other guy's a young guy. I'm in my fifties and he's like 21 and big as a house, you know, so they're not winded at all. And I'm already winded and it's the first leg of the journey. So <laughs> I didn't say anything. And we're going down the gravel road and we're going the ground gravel road. I look to my left and I, I see what looks like a tree that's been twisted and bent over. And there's like the tall grass in the ditch was kind of ashed down, like, you know, like where deer or something had like crossed the road. And then straight across from that was like kind of the swampy area. And once again, I was almost going to be like, Hey, you guys, let's check that out. But I didn't cause I was trying to catch up and that. And, uh, so then we're hiking along and we get to Sanju Lake and, uh, we were going to go, we thought there was another campsite on the other side of the lake. So we kept going and, uh, we wound up, well, that was the last campsite. So then we figured out we better just go on to egg lake. So we wound up hiking about eight miles that first day and, uh, we get to egg lake and it's kind of overcast and rainy. And, uh, we see this campsite that's down toward the lake and, uh, the camp area, had like two paths that went down to the lake. The one to the right kind of went down to this big rock where we could scoop up water to filter water. And then that was where they had a designated bear hang. And then the other one you know, like uh, branched and kind of went off to your left. And it eventually went down to the lake, but there's like this little low area where you could look down over the top of these like shrubs that were probably like about four or five feet high. Um, and then there's woods around the entire campsite. So there's like a fire pit. We set up camp and I had brought like a little sleeve like tent, um, that you lay down in because I wanted to save weight. And, uh, there was a bad choice. Just because, so, it, uh, um, so, it's, uh, uh, like it's open on at the top and the bottom. So more like a pup tent or just no, like a one man tent. Just, it's just like a one man tent. That's like a low to the ground sleeve. And then I hung another rain fly over the top okay. of it. Um, and then mine was probably the closest to the lake. And it was close to the path that went down that overlooked the shrubs. Um, <laughs> you're and the funny. campfire you're like, was off. You're like, it ended up being a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then the campfire yeah. was off to my, my left. Uh-huh. And my head was facing west. And my feet were facing east toward the lake. And then Joe was like kind of straight ahead of me, probably about on the yards and then off to the left and then mike was on the clear on the other side of the campfire and he had a hammock hanging from some trees so i, I work overnight so it's hard for me to sleep at night anyway even though i was like, physically exhausted and that so it's getting dark you know we eat we we get into the uh tents i'm sitting there and i'm laying there and i'm like man i should be sleeping but i can't because i'm you know it's my internal clock i'm supposed to be awake and I can hear the fire going down and eventually all the light from the fire is gone and it's dark. And you just heard the very rare, you know, like pop, you know, of the fire. And as I'm sitting there and it's like, just as you could tell the fire is pretty much completely out. I'm laying there and I hear a, a whistle and it's like just a straight, I can't whistle, but <laughs> it was like, a, and uh, I'm like, what? You know? And then I hear a whoop. And I was like, no way. Now this is just, you know, crazy. So I'm laying there and I'm like, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear it, you know, and I'm laying there. <laughs> and then I kind of hear what sounds like footsteps coming from the woods to my right and the fires to my left coming kind of through the brush toward my tent. So I'm like, oh, 
crap, you know? <laughs> so I start rattling the stuff I had at the head of my bed, you know, thinking, well, if it's a rabbit or something like that, it'll, you know, scare it away or something. And then, uh, I hear a couple more footsteps. So then I'm like, Joe, <laughs> and, uh, this is what I call out. And then Mike never heard any of this, which is, you know, surprising, but so then Joe hears me and I can hear him coming out of his tent. So I unzip my tent and I come out and I got my led light and, uh, I haven't quite turned it on yet. And Joe's like, what's going on? I'm like, I heard like an animal, you know, coming like toward my tent and stuff like that. And he's like, well, shine the bear hang. You know, so I shine the bear hang and there's nothing there. And he's like, you know, he goes, you know, the bear would be the only thing you'd be worried about and stuff like that. And so I'm like, okay, you know, no big deal. All right. You're overreacting, you know, everything. Joe goes back to bed. I crawl back into my tent and I'm laying there and things kind of settle down for a little bit. And then I start hearing like footsteps coming up that path that went to the, where the shrubs were. Oh, I totally skipped over the, before we went to bed. <laughs> Oh, there's more stuff yeah. before you guys went to bed? Well, well, yeah, before we went to bed, the baby crying. I missed that part all the Oh, other. that that had already <laughs> happened. Yes, we we need to talk uh, about the baby cry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, th- uh, I, I don't know why baby. I thought that was still coming. I, I forgot that that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, geez. Anyway, man, that kind of. Anyway, so well, before we go to bed, we're sitting there on the campfire. And uh, um, so we're sitting there and we're eating. And we're just all exhausted, so we're not really talking that much. And all of a sudden, a baby starts crying, and then it stopped. And, like, we were just all sitting there, and none of us really reacted to it or anything. So we're sitting there, and then it does it again. And, I mean, it's a baby crying. And then it stops. It was creepy. And... Um, yeah, that was really creepy. <laughs> you know? So when, like, when you, you know, say there, baby, like baby out here? when you say baby cry... You mean like, yeah. like, wah, wah, like that or? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, how many times like, would it do wah. it? I, I want to say it did it like in bursts of three both times. Okay. Oh, um, my God. Like, like yeah. yeah. Screw that. <laughs> you know, like, like, well, this was so, uh, my Mike is an avid hiker. So I, everything I was doing was like kind of based off him, you know, because mm-hmm. he, he's the outdoor guy. So he wasn't reacting to it or acted like that was anything <laughs> unusual. But in my brain's like, that was a baby. <laughs> that wasn't any bird. That wasn't, that wasn't a rabbit getting killed. You know, that was, you know. Did it sound close? Was it loud? Yeah, it sounded like it was coming from those shrubs. Uh, oh, that good you could God. Down, look down over. Yeah. And that would have been the direction of the path that the footsteps came from the right. second time. Yeah, um, so. Hell no. See, I don't understand that. Was he... <laughs> With him being an avid hiker, and mm. I understand if you're, you know, if you're on some kind of a busy trail or something, or you're somewhere very mm. um, populated or more populated, yeah. but you guys are like, you said eight miles back in the bush, and it's not really a populated it's all, area. Yeah, and we and we picked we picked a Monday, uh, right? Late at, late in the season because we didn't want anybody why, else out there. You why know? didn't he react to it? Because it did freak him out. Maybe he was just trying to be like, Oh, that's nothing. Don't worry. Like, because once you yeah, accept the fact that some weird shit's going on, you might be like, well, let's just go. And maybe he, he didn't yeah. want to acknowledge it. Yeah. No, I, I, you know, it's like, uh, Joe said it was creepy, and we all <laughs> silently agreed. <laughs> but, so, but Mark, Mark is the guy. Mark is yeah. is a guy, or Mike's guy well, in the hammock, or um, I mean, right? My, it, which one was the one in the hammock that didn't hear anything? My, Mike, Mike was the guy that. Mike, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I, he I, slept I, through everything. Other than me waking Joe up, Joe probably would have slept through everything. So too. he really is just like he's unless he. I don't know. I he's one in the hammock, not even in a tent. Not that a tent provides yeah. that much. Uh, sound barrier protection, but it is interesting yeah. that he was in a hammock. He didn't. He didn't hear it. Mm-hmm. Y- you wake. Mm-hmm. You wake Joe up, but then the baby yeah. cry. So, the thoughts with the baby cry. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. If it is a Bigfoot doing that, is it, is it simply they're trying to get you out into the woods to do God knows what to human beings or to test you or to ma- make you leave? I don't know. Well, part of me, and and this is you know the where things go weird for me is I remember like after the baby cried and Joe said it was creepy, we were all getting ready to go to bed. Um, so I actually kind of walked down that path mm-hmm. um, to the left a little bit, and that's when I saw where it went because before we only went, I only went down the one to the right to get water mm-hmm. um, to hang, you know, for the filtration, 
And so, but after the baby crying, we got done eating and putting our food away. I walked down that path toward the lake. And that's where I saw that you could oversee the shrubs and stuff like that down in that area. So then I go back and we're sitting there and this is where, you know, you're like, I want to say, I kind of wonder if maybe if I had to like try to figure out why like baby, you know, crying that is maybe we had separated the group somehow or something, you know, like, uh, and it was off by itself down on that side and maybe the uh, adults or something were laying low and, uh, weren't going to cross until we were settled down or something. Mm. I don't mm-hmm. know. And maybe, I, I don't know. That, I, I mean, the only thing I can think of is maybe we'd interrupted or, or separated something, you know. So you think it actually may have been a juvenile uh, signaling maybe some adults well, with that? a couple of days later, me and Joe, uh, we were working, it was kind of slow, and we even went and, like, played, like, the weird noises that coyotes make, yeah. you know, all the different kind of about owl, owl sounds and stuff like that. And anything we even typed in animals that make baby crying sounds. Um, and we couldn't find anything that sounded like that. I mean, I, and I'm, like I said, I'm around crying babies a lot. I make babies cry by just walking into rooms <laughs> and, uh, uh, just, you know, being a nurse. And, yeah. and uh, so I'm like, I, I know what a baby crying sounds like. And that's what that was. That's always on my no list. It's one thing to to try to bring something in while playing a really super annoying recording, right? Because you just Mm -hmm. know you're playing. But to have that played to you from the woods, you're eight miles back. Mm -hmm. Hell no. That sucks. That just would have freaked me right out. Mike's over here like, oh, no, no big deal. (laughs) I'm like, like, what the hell? That's That's not normal. And, and the whole thing is on the, on the way on the trip there, you know, I was kind of like, you know, I said, you know, I, I didn't want to be the guy that's hearing Bigfoot behind every shrub. I didn't, you right. know, like I joke around about it at work and I'm an enthusiast and stuff like that. And, you know, um, but the fact that, you know, things were kind of happening, I'm like, okay, this is, you know, strange. And then the baby crying, I'm like, oh, it's just creepy animal sound, you know, <laughs> like time to get some rest because we're going to head out early in the morning. Right. And then, uh, and that's when I heard the whistle and the whoop and I'm like, no way, no, no way, <laughs> no baby crying, then whistle then whoop <laughs> right afterwards. I'm like, like that, oh. and that was a definite whistle and a definite whoop. Right. And I'm like, and, I was and, like, this is, and was the whistle on one side and then the whoop uh, on another from what you could tell? The whistle was right to my right where I heard the steps coming from. Mm-hmm. And the whoop kind of was like straight ahead of me, which would have been like clear on the opposite side by Mike. It would have been kind of closer to Joe um, off to his uh, off to my right. I, I was laying on my stomach, so it would have been kind of the woods just past his tent. He was really asleep then. Mike does not yeah. get up for for anything. No. Yeah. And well, and Joe never heard anything either. until I yelled his name. Mm, that's you know? true. Yeah. 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 So, okay, so let's. And both of them, Joe. Joe had a lot of outdoor camping type stuff too. Okay. Um, I have an interesting story that he had told me that I might like share a little bit to kind of put some light on some stuff too. But so you know, I'm like, after I shine the bear hang and we get back to bed and we go to sleep. You know, well, I, I don't go to sleep. I crawl into my tent and I'm just laying there and I'm like, okay, try to go to sleep. But I knew it wasn't going to happen. So I'm laying there and I'm laying there and I'm laying. There. I don't know how long it was, but it was a significant amount of time from the time I woke Joe up and that's when I heard the footsteps coming up from that path that I had went down. And that's when I started rattling everything again. And then of course footsteps stop. And then I'm like, Joe. <laughs> and at this point he's kind of had it with me you know, and he's <laughs> like, Oh, you know what? So we both get out of our tents and he's like, and he goes, if it's a bear, you know, it's like, we got the bear hang, you know, it's like, it'll go away or whatever. So anyway, he shined the bear hang again. And then he starts getting back into his tent to go back to sleep. And after I, I'm sitting there with my light on the bear hanging, I'm like, all right. So I turn off my light and I spun like 180 degrees, which would be the direction where I heard the whistle. And I turn my LED light on again and to the trees. And of course, everything just kind of washes out. It's more of like a white light. You don't even really see the green, you know, at first. And, you know, it, it takes a while for my, my vision to like kind of, settle on what I'm looking at and mm-hmm. leaves and everything. 
And then I see like about three feet up back in kind of some of the heavier shrubs. And I didn't notice it until they turned off to the left toward the lake. And it looked like, like eye shine, like the zipped, like it kind of held for a second. And then about the time my eyes adjusted, it turned toward the lake. And I'm like, that's it. I, <laughs> my tent only had a few little stakes. I pulled them up, dragged my tent right up next to Joe's, <laughs> staked it down as best as I could. <laughs> and then I even grabbed some like twigs and um, branches and stuff and kind of strewed them around my tent in sort of like a little perimeter to make noise. And then I crawled back into my tent. That was, that was not a horrible idea, I got to say. I mean, if you had strings <laughs> yeah. and bells, you probably would have put those up too. So yeah. the, the ice shine, how far yeah. away would, would you say you were standing from where this thing was, whatever it was? Uh, probably about 15 feet or so. I don't know. That's I mean, pretty close, it, yeah. It, um, yeah. The, light, the, the, the shining of the light just kind of, like I said, it was like a pattern of like what turned out to be leaves washed mm-hmm. out in like a bright light. And by the time I started to adjust, then I just kind of track movement, right. you know, like of two things turning, you know, to the simultaneous. To the yeah. Uh, but yeah, we, I was too close to, you know, I was like, nope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really that, that's unnerving. Would you say that the eyes, eye shine seem far apart if it was on, you know, something like a big thing? Yeah. You know, I mean, it didn't strike me as overly like huge. Um, and like I said, it was a probably about like four three to four feet up. So it wasn't way like I saw way up in like eight feet high or anything like I that. It could have either. been crouching down though. Yeah. You never know. Of course, yeah, with the baby I cry, would, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. I figured if it was something, you know, it was down low behind, yeah. you know, the, the brush and stuff. Because if you take something, I guess, let's go to the, the top of the charts, which we don't usually hear all the time, but 10 feet, mm-hmm. 11 feet. And then, you know, say mm-hmm. they crouch down. Yeah. Where does that put it? Yeah. You know, I don't know, but it's just yeah. a theory. Who yeah. knows? But just wondering, um, considering the, the fact that it sounds like you had a couple yeah. of, at least two around you, uh, you know, you have I, whistles and whoops right back to back. Yeah. So. Yeah, the whistle and then the whoop, and then I said, you know, like the, the one set of steps came directly to my right, about up to my head level, yeah. um, and then the others. After I rattled, made noise, and went back to sleep, the next time they approached from a different angle, and that was like from toward my feet, like where I wouldn't be able to see out of the. Like if you knew my head was toward that side of the tent, you would have been coming completely behind me, you know, the second set of steps, and that you know. But then this is kind of where everything kind of gets weird, you know, for me. Um, so, like, I'm, I'm in the tent safe next to Joe <laughs> and uh, got my perimeter all set up in that. And I'm like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm going to go to sleep now. You know, it's like I'm overreacting. This is all just a hysterical mind. I listen to too many podcasts. You know, it's like just chill out, you know. <laughs> and uh, so I kind of start falling asleep. And my mind starts racing and it's like, I got to build. Oh, there's one thing I did do <laughs> before I went to sleep, listening to like uh, uh Sasquatch Chronicles and stuff like that. One of the things that I did was we had passed an area where there was a little bit of logging and stuff like that. But right before I went to sleep, I kind of said like a little internal thing. I'm like, I'm saved in the name of Jesus Christ. And I uh, don't have anything to do with the logging. And then I kind of like settled down. You know, I didn't say it out loud in my mind. You know, I kind of made this statement and then I kind of settled down and started trying to, to go to sleep. And uh, I don't know when I kind of felt like I was on the verge of falling asleep, my mind's racing. And it was all like when I was working in a factory and building and building. And I remember my mind like building. And then it's like, you know, I'm saved, building, saved, building. And then I wake up and I can hear Joe in the tent next to me and I can hear his breathing and his breathing was faster than you would imagine a person that was sleeping. Mm. But when he would exhale, it's like the exhale went on longer than when he was exhaling. 
Mm. And I sat there and like would even hold my breath and stuff like that. And it was like this really weird feeling like there was something next to the tent, you know, and, and I would hear like that breathing and I'm like, okay, maybe it's just my mind. And then it was like the thought of like, well, if you want to see me, (laughs) it came into my head and I was like, no, (laughs) no, I I don't want to, I don't want to see. And then, uh, then I do fall asleep, um, after that surprisingly. And part of the reason I fall asleep is because, you know, I mentioned you know, there had been some logging off in like a distance, like we kind of crossed a little area. I heard what sounded like heavy equipment. And, uh, like if you've ever been around a dump truck and it's got an empty load and it's driving in the big giant heavy tailgate, it's kind of clunking. Mm-hmm. Could have swore I was hearing like the clunking, you know, mm-hmm. like, and like kind of to me, my brain said, oh, okay. Um, it's really early in the morning. And the loggers are here, you know, so I'm like, all right, cool. So whatever might've been here is cleared out because, you know, there's people in the woods and stuff like that. And then I, I go to sleep. And uh, so when I wake up, it's pitch black and, you know, I, I hear like an owl, you know, and I'm like, okay, probably just an owl, Mm -hmm. but it's really dark. So I do turn on my phone and then when my phone turns on, it's one 30 in the morning. Mm. So, so I'm like, and then there's no more of that construction sound. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> so that wasn't construction. No, I don't not, know. not that early or late, whichever one you want to yeah. think of it. And then it kind of started to rain and, and then uh, that kind of gave me some white noise. And then I wound up going back to sleep, but. I guess it was just kind of a weird night. And then that last part was what really like made me think, okay, I would, as a Bigfoot enthusiast, you know, like, okay, that's weird stuff. You know, do you think that it was in fact, Joe breathing or it was the thing outside the tent making the long exhalations and then breathing faster than should have been? Yeah. I mean, and, and it was kind of fun. I, I purposely would listen like, you know, like I could kind of hear his rhythm. And it was like the exhale would still be going about the time he would be inhaling again. And, and I, I don't know, that was what, you know, and that's like, well, that's probably just overactive mind, you know, I'm just, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm tired. The rest of the trip, nothing. Um, we got to the next size, beautiful, it was on a hill, nothing, no weird feelings, like totally had a cool, relaxed time. How far away was Same that? Same with the next, next night. Uh, we did about eight miles each day. We okay. did about 40 miles and we camped three nights. And, uh, and then yeah, on the, on the way back, I, you didn't stop at that same campsite before you got back to the... No, camp. no. We had a we had a shuttle take us and drop us okay, off where gotcha. we put in. And then we hiked back to where we uh, left from. I guess that worked out well for you, huh? Especially since you're mm-hmm. the only only one really even having heavy experiences yeah, and, out uh, you there. Know, so, so the last night that we went to camp, um, so, and also I was very strategic in my tent placement. <laughs> I would um, imagine so. When, when, when we were at the other uh, campsite, um, uh, I figured out where Joe and Mike were putting up their tents and I strategically yeah. put them triangulated where like there would be the fire, then they would be off like on each corner of me. So I'd be kind of in the center. <laughs> and then uh, the, the third night, So we get to a campsite and I do the same thing. I kind of pick, you know, where the campfire is and then where Mike's setting up his, he was always limited where he set up his hammock between trees, but there was also like another little perfect. If you went down from the campfire, there's like a little path and then there's like a circled out area with a really nice soft pad that you could put your tent that was surrounded completely by trees. (laughs) And I'm like, no, Uh -uh. I'm not going to camp there. But (laughs) Joe went down there and walked down there. So I thought he was going to put his tent there, but he came up the hill and put his tent right next to mine. (laughs) Oh, well, I mean, do you think there was something that he didn't want to tell you or he just, uh, yeah, he's adamant about like, uh, you know, I just overreacted the first night and stuff. But, Mm. but so here's the, 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 the Joe story. Um, him and his brother were going to, uh, I always get these states confused. Montana, I think it was, to visit some buddies. He used to work with, like, this 
fire group that went out and kind of cleared fire mm-hmm. uh, paths and stuff like that when he was uh, before he came back. But uh, you know, his brother were driving out that way, and they were in a little Honda Civic. And these are like big guys. Joe's a really big guy, and uh, they're in that little Honda Civic, and they go to I think it was Galatia Galatian National Forest or something like that. They were going to camp, so it's late at night. They finally get there. And when they pull into the, the park area, you know, there's no other cars or anything like that. So they, they pull off the, like in the scanning area and Joe gets out and he goes to the trunk of his car. And his brother gets out and is standing in the door of the car and he's just standing there and just like, come on, they got to get the tent and stuff. So he goes, Shh, listen. And Joe's like, what? And he goes, do you hear those people? And they're looking around. There's no other cars, no other campers or anything like that. And he said, they kind of heard, kind of jabbering kind of like voices back in the woods. And so they sat there and they could kind of hear some moving around back in the trees. So they're sitting there and then Joe said, uh, the headlights were coming forward and and then they could see some uh, coyotes looking down on him from the hill. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you saw the coyotes? And he's like, well, no, but there was eye shine that was kind of high up. So they figured it was coyotes (laughs) standing on the hill looking at him so my brain you know, like this is uh, he told me this story before we even went on our hiking trip and i'm like dude you totally had a bigfoot experience and stuff you know uh, but the whole thing is he's like we got out of there because you know he goes there's probably like some crackheads or something out there you know messing around so they didn't they got creeped out enough to where they didn't stay there because uh, yeah because he just he so they thought obviously two separate things he's like well there were people and then we had these freaking coyotes there for some random reason yeah. everybody's just out here partying and you're like um well no yeah, I, probably yeah, not. yeah. And, and then it's like well you saw these up on a hill and he's like no all with all you saw was like eye shine it was pretty high up mm. So he's not even sure oh. it was a hill back there. Right. So. <laughs> the, right. And then you're like, oh, yeah, good idea you got out of there. Yeah. yeah. Why, like, did why you hear did... what they were saying? Did you? He's That's like, no, because you couldn't ask, quite yeah. hear what they were. Yeah. He's like, mm. you couldn't make out words, but you knew, you know, like, he was like kind of would talk for a second and then mm. stop. And then they heard like movement and stuff right. like that. You know? Oh, boy. But, but they creeped out and left. You know? I don't think yeah. they would have stayed long if they would have actually set up camp, right? It seems like something the second, and that's not the first time we've heard that, right? You've heard that on podcasts, like mm. someone oh, yeah. will just yeah, that's why I, arrive I, I, there I, and then they'll get chased out. Yeah, I was like, oh, that was totally a Bigfoot encounter. And he's like, ah, oh, you're crazy. You know, So that's part of the reason why we went <laughs> on our trip. I, was, I wasn't going to say anything. I'm like, you know, I don't want to be the, you know, I clown around about it at work and stuff like that. And, Part of the reason I do that is because I work with my wife too. And when you work with people that work with you and your wife, they can sometimes, you know, you get a little familiar, yeah. you know, so like to kind of make up nonsensical conversation <laughs> to avoid uh, talking about you know, anything <laughs> personal or anything, you know, you just kind of go off on things. Well, so what, ab- what about get... the, um, you know, the whistle and the whoop that was heard? Yeah. Um, yeah. Did Mike or Joe then or now or ever say maybe not about that specifically but did they did anyone go oh i've heard that in the woods before and or or even if they tried to pass it off as nothing i mean you know you said they're both avid hikers they go out a lot i i just don't really see how uh especially like a whoop like at least somebody could have said well one of the two avid hikers, oh, I thought we'd be out here alone. What the hell is that person, you know, person doing out here? You know, yeah. even if they would have said something about, about another person being out there making these noises. We all agree about the baby crying creepiness. Um, that was something that, yeah, like uh, mm-hmm. Mike had never heard anything like that. But, you know, his mind, he just rationalized it off, I assume. I don't um, know and, how, and, you know, but that's Joe, okay. And it, and, it, and it bothered Joe. <laughs> It bothered Joe enough for him to say it was creepy. Right. You know. But, and, uh, but that's what I mean. On top of that, and then you got the yeah, whistle, but, the whoop, and all this other well stuff. Asleep. Uh, they yeah. had probably been asleep for maybe an hour before right. the fire finally died down. So they were, you know, hiking eight miles. They're out in the fresh air. They were down. You know, that's true. Sleeping. Neither so they one never of them heard, admitted They never heard it. a whistle or a whoop. And yeah. then there was never again, a, there was never again a whistle or a whoop since I reacted to it, I yeah. guess. Um but then later, you know, I did kind of hear like, like an owl was still kind of close in that area where I originally heard the first whistle. You hope and it was an owl. Well, yeah, I know. And, and then, <laughs> th- then another owl would answer. Mm. Um, 
kind of far off uh, right. on the opposite side, kind of like, uh, you know, I mean, okay. So if this were not just owls, then it was like, one was like, I'm still got an eye on things. And the other yeah. was like, okay, we're over here doing our business, you know? Right. And then if they move, let us know, kind of, <laughs> you know, I mean, the, but, you the, know, they, the mind racing thing, you know, I'm like, I was fatigued, you know, tired, you know, I'm like, it's, it's, it's like sleep deprivation, paranoia, everything all built up, you know, um, and then, you know, the whole, yeah, that part to me, I'm like, was that just, yeah, was that all just my you, brain right? Overreacting, right? You know, yeah, yeah, just, uh, because probably you know. part of you, not that I'm trying to automatically rationalize it away or anything, but maybe it was just you no mm. you know you really did feel like there was something around you had more experience uh auditory wise than the other guys you heard the whistle the whoop they at least say if they did they didn't admit mm. it maybe in your mind you're just kind of going oh my god i mean maybe i i am kind of the bigfoot guy maybe i would want to see this yeah. and then your yeah, mind's like no I, I don't want to see you i don't want to see you i i mean i, I hope that's all what that was going on i was like Mark, you're the crazy Bigfoot guy, finally. Yeah, I mean, I joked around about it, but like, yeah. you really are. You know, you've yeah. really listened to way too many podcasts. You're freaking out. You know, this is just, you know. Or but, maybe it yeah. is something else, right? Uh, yeah. No, the baby crying and the whistle and the whoop, for sure, that was. And then the footsteps. I'm like, those, I, I'm like, that definitely might have triggered the whole other stuff you know right um, the, which like, kind of like uh, definitely could but i remember distinctly having the thought like i'm right here if you want to see me kind yeah. of thing and i'm like i you know like i remember like no i'm not coming out anymore i'm not gonna look and even if you had the lovely Harry from Harry and the Hendersons just outside your tent. You still don't want to freaking see him. You're in the middle of nowhere. Your friends are sleeping. The, I, I mean, no. Yeah. It would it would and, change and then, your life. Yeah. And then the funny, uh, here's a funny side note. So the next morning, you know, it's still kind of drizzling in that. And I can hear the other guys moving about packing stuff up. So I get up to pack my stuff up. And as soon as I come out of my tent, my perimeter is scattered all over the place. Um, no nowhere way. near my tent. And I'm like, oh my god! Oh god! <laughs> and and then Mike's like, yeah, I moved that stuff because I was afraid someone was going to trip over it. <laughs> oh, Mike! God damn it, Mike! That's a hel- oh my goodness! You're like, so dude, like, oh. I could just uh, clobber you right now. Oh, yeah, that's funny. So I was afraid someone was going to. I, I, I wasn't. I wasn't making that up. I'm not going crazy. And then it's like, okay, I, yep, I'm still crazy. Well, when when did he move that stuff? Uh, before I, when he first woke up. And okay, in I the morning. He went to the bathroom and he saw it laying okay. around there. And thought it was weird. <laughs> yeah. You're all Blair witching yeah. it up. You're like, I need a perimeter. <laughs> I'm not messing around here, man. And then, I, other than telling Joe about the footsteps coming uh-huh. up to the tent, um. The rest of the trip, I never mentioned anything or, or even mm. talked about that with them. You know, I, I just went, I'm like, you know, like, okay, I'm here to have fun. We're just going to do the hiking thing. And so then later, you know, I'm like, no one's going to appreciate the things that I witnessed as far as like someone like me. You know, right. if I ran into another Bigfoot person, like, hey, dude, I heard a whistle. I heard a whoop. You know, I heard footsteps coming up. Uh, Other than Joe, Joe and me, I told I've told both of them what I you know had going during the night, and that and we're planning on going out again this uh, this year somewhere further probably. What did and, they uh, say about all the other they're, stuff? They're, they're willing to take me along. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't burn your bridge yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and well, I, you know, I didn't want to like like oh my god, guys, oh my god, right, know? right. Uh, but but that night when it was happening, that's what my brain was like. Well, yeah, sure. after the, look, the baby cry would have been enough for me. I probably would have, mm-hmm. com- I'm not even going to try to act yeah. like a badass. I probably would have been like, no, 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 goodbye, we're out, we're leaving, let's hike another eight miles back or another eight miles forward. I don't know, that yeah. that that is so messed up, and the that baby was, cry from the yeah. woods. Yeah, and that was unanimously a thing that all three of us agreed right. was weird. Right, Yeah. But the other two uh, I don't still even think slept Mike like ever babies. Heard anything like that, and then Joe even voiced how creepy you know it was. So. 
Yeah, but they can still sleep because they're psychotic or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, and then I, I didn't sleep. react or I didn't like jump on. And I mean, yeah, that's weird. You know, I, I just like, we all silently agreed with Joe <laughs> without actually like making a big deal out of it. And I think maybe we were playing poker there. You know, we were all like gauging each other on how creepy it really <laughs> <Yeah>. was. <laughs> Who's got and the best. Want to show our, and we didn't want to show our hand. <laughs> Who's got the best <laughs> you know, baby like, cry. Uh, I didn't hear it face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, like, I'm I not mean, scared. <laughs> I mean, it's it's one of those things where, you know, you got three grown men, and then you hear a baby cry in the woods, and whatever the game plan was of the thing making the noise, I don't know how you can, like you said, you guys even later try to get on YouTube and find anything that kind of made kind of sort of a baby cry noise, and if it's wah, 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 there is nothing mm. like that. So, I just... I just, the, the other guys and everything, I'm just like kind of going, mm. well, I mean, there's a best case scenario and a worst case scenario. And actually, mm. they're both pretty crappy scenarios because yeah. <laughs> it's not supposed to be happening. So mm. it's just so funny because yeah. nobody was like, well, God, I mean, is there a baby in the wood? I mean, you know, what the hell? It's, it's, that's an, it's really a nutty situation to be in that far into the woods. And if any, anybody really would stop and think about that for a second mm. and actually yeah. think about hearing that, it is, it's terrifying. I think we ran into, uh, the first two days of hiking, we never even saw other people except for one group of people when we had just left Sanju Lake and still had about like another four miles or so to go. We didn't know um, to get to Egg Lake where this took place. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a, a group of people, like there's three people um, probably in their early 20s, you know, um, and they were coming and they asked us how far it was to Sanju Lake. And we said, oh, it's not too far that way because we just left there. And then we're like, we're going to stay at Egg Lake. And one of the guys was like, yeah, we were too, but it was really cold. And then they mm. went on to Sanju Lake. And this is August and it was hot. There was no Like, what are you talking cold, about? Cold. Excuses. Yeah. But that was someone running from the baby cry like <laughs> I would have done. Yeah. yeah. August. Like, oh. What do you mean, cold? You can't sleep there because of all the babies. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> that damn egg leg babies are out again. <laughs> yeah, there's the, like a wild tribe of the, babies yeah, running around. The babies the at, of Egg Lake, Minnesota. God <laughs> bless those things. Yeah. Oh, God, that's screwed up. That's an interesting yeah. little tidbit, though, isn't it? The guy saying it's too cold. No, it's yeah, not. Yeah, I remember because I thought, I remember thinking, oh, that's weird. It's too cold you know, or something. I don't know. Because, I mean, by that time, it was in the evening, so we were going to be, because we were getting to the campsite right around dusk, Um, and uh, so that would have meant that, you know, they were kind of late to getting set up, too, by, like, going on. You know, they kind of did the same thing we did by passing Sanju. They passed Egg Lake, so, you know, it was a bit of a longer hike than you thought between the two places, so, you know. You know, I thought I was going to name this like something like Barefoot Children of the Corn or something, but I think like uh, Woods Dwelling Babies of Egg Lake sounds better. <laughs> I don't know. That has a better ring to it after yeah. after this. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, this no, creeps I, me out. It's so I creepy. I listen to uh, um, uh, Monsters Among Us. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I like the way he does, you know, like kind of give a rationalization afterwards of, you know, like what things yes. could have been. You know, he doesn't try to detract or anything like that. And if it wasn't for the that weird, like kind of sleep deprived thing, I'm like, you know, to me, that would be something that I'm like, I, I mean, that would detract from anything I heard. Otherwise, you know, right. like if someone told that part of it. But that's something that I experienced, whether it was my own paranoia or sleep deprivation or, or what. But but I know for sure the whistle of the whoop was enough to get me to jump out in the footsteps, to jump out of my tent two different times. Right. And that was when I different. When I saw the eye shine, I'm like, nope, I'm not leaving my tent here. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, no. Probably the same uh, raccoon that snuck up behind me. Totally. <laughs> Big ass or raccoons of yeah, yeah, absolutely. The one that broke the branch, you know. He, oh, that guy. <laughs> thud, thud, thud. They're like, damn, that's a big yeah. raccoon. They grow them big up here. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, I'll have to see if I can bug Derek to come on. 
Um, I know he doesn't the, give a lot of interviews, but playing the baby cry worked mm. for for me and me and Wes when mm. we went out to the Brown property, and it worked for mm. Derek Randall's. Except he had a horrifying experience. And uh, and someone his. just recently did a podcast where someone else mentioned hearing a baby crying that yeah. uh, was weird to them. So mm-hmm. I was like, ah, okay, you know, and that's what made me. That too, but it wasn't that they were playing a baby cry, they right. mentioned something about you know. right. No, I'm happy that with my experience with the baby cry, it was mm. me playing the baby cry and mm. not hearing it coming from the woods. That would really affect me, I think. That would really freak mm. me out. And, and of course, like you said, it doesn't help that you're you know, when you're already kind of ingrained in this and you listen to the podcast, mm. and I'd be the same way. I'd be like, damn it, woman, you talk to too many people with too many stories, mm. and you listen to too many shows, go to sleep, chill the hell out. But sometimes, you know, you, you just can't really ignore things. I mean, like when I heard the, um, the monotone whistle in Salt Fork, you know, I always describe it as just a really screwed up sounding mimic of a bird. It was just really messed up mm. sounding. And like that was not natural, normal something with lips and, you know, very powerful sounding. Uh, it, it, it it really leaves an impression on you. Well, and then that's where I kind of got, like, if, the, you know, the whole strategy of, well, somebody's responding to the whistle and the whoop and, you know, like, is shining light around. Yeah. So maybe we should switch to the owl sounds. <laughs> that's what I'm kind of you know? wondering. I mean, not that we're assuming yeah. that now the owls are making, I, I know, or the Bigfoot are making that's... owl sounds, but it could be. It's not impossible because I've heard a lot yeah. of people uh, talk about that. When you when I went out with the the Garretts in mm. Texas, again mm. with Wes, uh, they were talking about that. And we did hear actual owls, and we actually saw the owls. So it's not like yeah. everything's a Bigfoot. Uh but no, you, yeah, you do hear I don't that. want to go down that. Right. And, you know, the funny part is I, 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 uh, I sit here and tell this and then like to hear either Joe or Mike tell the story. It's like, yeah, we had a really awesome time going on a ter- typically normal hiking trip. Kind of heard a weird baby cry. Yeah. And Mark freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was Mark. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't, t- I didn't tell them anything about like the whole, uh, I never told Joe about the, the well, he kind of knew I was hearing an animal, you know, but oh. I didn't specifically say, hey, there's footsteps coming up behind me, you know. Um, so he knows about the, uh, you know, me shining the light and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, none of the others, he was not pretty too because he went to sleep. So. He was sleeping like a baby. Yeah. The but damn. I did think it's funny he didn't go to that one little uh, off of the side camp spot yeah <laughs> for for someone that just seems very aloof about everything he didn't want to go down yeah. ar- around the stand of trees that will surround him so a, a big <laughs> hairy hand can reach out and grab him up oh. of course uh if he ever hears us he'll uh definitely uh oh, i didn't either <laughs> yeah it was harder than you it, it was harder than it looked <laughs> yeah, yeah so you guys are going back out there maybe this season Oh yeah, we're we're gonna do kind of a impromptu, just kind of a cool. like a cart cart in camp thing. But then we want to do another like four day hike, and we want to do a section that we we didn't do before. I want to get like a little recorder, uh, like audio type recorder or something, in case there's more babies or more whistles or whoops. You know? but, uh, damn babies! Yeah, I think I don't think I, you know I don't think any. You know, by the time you try to turn on your phone or turn on a GoPro or anything like that, yeah, you know, I didn't done. know what the audio recording would pick up. Yeah, usually by Plus that I time, I didn't want to it's burn done. up. Didn't want to burn up my batteries or anything. So, yeah, I think the only reason that we, and I think that one of the recorders was it didn't pick it up, but you know, I I I had taken my it was either my phone or Wes's phone put the YouTube on with the baby cry. It wasn't like right next to us so that we could mm. hear if anything was going mm. on anywhere else. We, you know, somebody walked off, set it down. It's going, 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 going. I'm like, geez, this is super annoying. Um, and then, uh, and then it was actually not while it was playing, but the second the phone died is when mm. the, the, the whoops came in, in succession of like, I think it was a three, a three, like whoop, whoop, mm. whoop. But it, it was, uh, the second the phone died, um, it was wow. going, yeah. popping off and, and it sounded feminine, which is kind of interesting. So I, I don't know. 
And the, the other thing is the timing of the, the whistle and the whoop, you know, I mean, uh-huh. it had been probably about an hour, hour and a half. I was still awake and those guys were not sound asleep. Yeah. And I, I specifically remember thinking, oh, the fire is finally completely out, you know. And then just about then, it's like almost as if once the fire was out, you know, then that's when I heard the, the whistle and then the whoop, like just right after it. So it's almost as if the timing, you know. Right. And oh, they're I'm asleep, sorry. The I, fire's out. I, you know. I think I misspoke. I think it was the whoops were going on. Uh, in be- We could hear enough in between, the, like when the the baby on the YouTube would take a break. I'm sorry. I think uh, I misspoke. Yeah. I think it was no more whoops happened the second that the phone finally died and the whoops on the YouTube stopped and then they stopped. I'm sorry. I think I misspoke. But the timing, I think, is everything with that. Uh, if something is watching you or, like you said, the mm-hmm. fire dies and then something goes on or uh, when you mentioned Joe and his brother, you know, the, mm-hmm. pretty much the second he gets out of the car, he said he opens the back and then his brother gets out of the side, they're already hearing stuff. I mean, it's like, you know. Well, yeah. Joe was focused. He was just got to set up camp. You right. Know, get set up, go to sleep. And, you know, it would, until he knows his, you know, brother not moving. And then he was like listening. And he's like, listen, don't you hear that? You know. Was, mm. <laughs> There's a bunch of people here already. And look, look at the band of coyotes up there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, oh, out of here, go. Um, well, I'd be interested to hear if anything happens on your, on your uh, impromptu trip. Mm. So, uh, yeah. And I, I, you know, I'm totally not expecting any of that, no, but I no. wasn't this time too. I was actually kind of, like I said, I, being the goofy Bigfoot guy, you know, mm-hmm. going camping, I'm like, I don't want to be a jerk, you know, when we go camping. So that's why I didn't want right. to, you know, Did I you? didn't even mention the weird stuff other than, you know, waking Joe up that night. So did you hear didn't Ty, talk to anyone about it? So. Did you hear Ty mention that he felt like once he had one experience that it was like opening Pandora's box and then all this stuff was going on and um Well, I kinda thought of it too, you know, you hear about like the third eye, you know, mm-hmm. kind of thing. That yeah. once it's open you can perceive things that maybe other people yeah. don't and kind of thing. And uh, you know, I think because I, I when that tree branch broke over my head and that I had forgotten about Bigfoot, you know, I mean, it was a childish thing put away with childish, you know, things, you know, I mean, I was an adult then I was going about the business of life. I was just out at a campfire and it was after that, that I immediately became, I got to go on the internet. (laughs) I got to look this up, you know? And then from that point on, I kind of always kept a very, uh, open, interest in it you know checking up and and like i said i would pursue stories that had nothing weird in them you know they were more just like okay right. big hairy ape and there was that one youtube video i it's like Sobe bigfoot and it's like these teenagers around the campfire and they put like a Sobe bottle or something like that in the fire and it shoots up and then uh it was on finding bigfoot i think and then something big kind of stands up behind a couch and moves off to the left hmm. Uh, and it's like a big shape, you know, you can't tell if it's a person or not, but whatever it was, it was definitely bigger than the kids sitting there and kind of wonder like, Oh, you're drawn in by like the fire and activity and stuff like that. Yeah. It does. And then I was like, like, sorry, go ahead. No. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, it does seem like if you're just kind of going about your business, uh, that's when mm. they they become interested until they're not. And mm. then they just want to scare the shit out of you. So you leave. Oh. Uh, mm. Mm. If it does seem like sometimes they're just doing the the whoops and the whistles and the damn mm. baby cries as locators or something I don't know or maybe the the cry yeah, is I, to, I, to draw people out but it it seems like they have their thresholds to where they're like okay you were kind of interesting but now you just need to to go and I never got the need to go feeling um, yeah at, like egg lake. You know, like the baby crying was weird, but none of us reacted to it, you know, other than Joe saying it's creepy, but like we didn't jump up and react to it. And then a short time after that, I do kind of walk in that direction and look in that area. And then I go back and then that's when we go to bed. So, you know, I, like it wasn't like things ramped up after that, but, you know, it's kind of like, well, if there was something there, it's like, 
all right, they didn't react to the baby crying thing, you know, yeah. like, we'll just need to kind of keep an eye on them. And then maybe it's right. like, oh, well, they're, as- they're asleep now. Let's go in and kind of check out the camp or something, you know, and maybe that's when I heard the footsteps, you know, and then, uh, you know, just about one about, but, oh, but then I reacted when I heard the footsteps. So mm-hmm. then it was like, oh, we need to watch them a little bit more. What if, but then, uh, yeah. What but I if, didn't feel like oh, you, they were going to chase us out. I didn't like right. ever feel like anything was throwing rocks at the tent or, or anything like that. What if you weren't out there with the guys? What if it was you and your wife? Just pretend that you and <laughs> your wife were out there, I, you know, and then yeah. it was the same situation. Would you guys, do you think, would have stayed after the baby cry? Well, I wife's never going to camp <laughs> well the, uh, let's just say yeah, for I, I arguments yeah, <laughs> like, uh, yeah yeah uh so yeah i mean she has e- even less experience than me with anything in the woods and stuff so i mean if i showed any kind of like Con- concern or something she'd be like okay, yeah any concern yeah. that it would like definitely probably ramp her up you know but she's a lot more practical and scientific minded just, than me so. i just really wonder if if you really got but she would uh, so, have definitely recognized the baby. <laughs> right. And and I think most people experienced or not would be like, there's not supposed to be any effing babies in the woods just randomly crying and, uh, you know, happen to be right n- near where we are. I just wonder if you got Joe and Michael a little sauced up on some, you know, whiskey or something, mm-hmm. if they would actually say, yeah, that baby cry really kind of freaked me out. Like, I, you know, but maybe everybody was just kind of trying to be like, Oh no, we're we're that was creepy, but we're gonna stay when maybe they didn't one really of, want to. Yeah, one of the next like when we do go on this next trip and that, um, I mean, I, I would like to say, all right, here's like I'd like to try this. Don't go to sleep right away, you know. Yeah. But but then again, you know, the the last two to three days of the trip, absolutely nothing. <laughs> you know, so I mean. Yeah. The odds of it ever happening again, in my theory, is like probably not. You know, I mean, right. sure, you know, well, like you said, it's like lightning striking. I mean, you did hit, yeah, yeah. the lottery basically. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, no, you didn't see one, but when you add up the eye shine and the whoop and the whistle and the baby cry and the mm-hmm. footsteps and all this, I mean, mm-hmm. it's kind of easy to see where we're going with this, and it's not a mm-hmm. horrible assumption to make. That's what it was. Um, so it is, and it I wonder is if cool I experience. hadn't been a avid podcast listener or or like enthusiast if I would have singled out right you the probably whoop and the whistle no you, know? you probably wouldn't have um I like I really feel like if if Joe or Mike had heard the whoop and the whistle they those are easier especially to pass off as normal okay well that's mm-hmm. an animal sound uh, the baby yeah. cries another issue but the whoop and the whistle especially you're like oh well, that, that was kind of interesting but that that's easier to pass off. So, and the whistle definitely sounded like just a person whistling. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it did sound birdy to me, but, uh, mm-hmm. and, and it was like pretty much dead silent, you know, and then heard that. And, and when I heard the whoop answer, and that was, you know, yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. I mean, you, if you hadn't have been, uh, and I was even going to write that off. Yeah. Until I heard the, the footsteps foot, approaching yeah. from the <laughs> direction of the whistle. <laughs> you're, you're probably like, come on! <laughs> Is this for real? Uh, oh. Still. And I didn't want to wake anyone at all either, you know, yeah. so that's why I rattled everything at the head of my bed. And it seemed to stop. Well, yeah, you would have been then, you would have been uninvited for every trip past that for the rest of your life, yeah. Mark, if you had w- <laughs> wake, it, if you wake everybody up again. You're like, come on, dude, we're trying to sleep. We've got another eight I've miles to, guys to about, Yeah, and since then I've talked to those guys about, you know, what I went through that night and stuff. And, you know, I write off a lot of it is just being the, the weird stuff, being sleep deprived and, you mm-hmm. know, I'm paranoid because of the things that happened before that. You probably had missing time. You just don't know it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Pardon my sister. Yeah. That was that was so interesting about that. I don't know what to make of that. Now, now, if I were to take her with us, <laughs> <laughs> that's she'd a good be on scene, Mark. She <laughs> <laughs> and I would that's feel a... definitely safer because she always looked out for me. So yeah, that's so funny. Yeah, you're like, well, you're I'm five, you're seven. If you say they're yeah. Indians, they're Indians. I mean, what? Am, I'm not going to argue with you. Um, yeah. 
So Problem you, solved. <laughs> you did say that, um, do you have time to share the Skinwalker in Colorado story that your coworker yeah, that told you? That, yeah, that one's not mine. Um, but, you know, having told like, yeah. my situations at work and that, so this, this girl at work was saying that she grew up in Colorado and um, her and her friend were out riding on four wheelers. And there was a part where they had to take the trail and cross like a, a blacktop road. And when they did, they drove over and there was like a dead carcass that had been there for a little bit. And uh, so then they went off over the trail and they were driving along and her friend kind of got up like over a hill or something, a little bit out of her eyesight. So when she gets back in the site, she stopped and she's sitting there and she's staring at this dog that's standing on the road, staring at her. And when she pulls up, she's like, what's going on? And her friend said, well, I just ran over that dog. And she's like, what? She goes, yeah, I just ran over that dog. And then it was like looking at them kind of creepily and they're like, well, okay. So then they were going to head back. And so they go back and when they cross the road that time, there's no sign of the dead carcass at all. Um, and they get back and then when they get home, they look up the road and there's that dog again. Oh. And so she and her friend always jokingly said that it was a skinwalker. Oh, that's creepy. Mm. That's a color, showed up color. at their house afterwards, right, too. Right. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh. What, what kind of, I mean, did, did she say what kind of dog it looked like? Yeah, no, not so much. But, I yeah. mean, she was just kind of like, it was one of those where you're telling a funny, weird story. And mm-hmm. then she's like, oh, we had this weird thing that happened the one time. And, right. You know, so I didn't press her too much for detail. Right. It's just something that she just can't place. Yeah. That's what's so cool about stuff like this, that uh, even at my work, you know, I'll tell them what I do, and I'm, you know, like kind of, I, f- I fly my freak flag high and proud, and mm-hmm. you know, I have, I, I just, I talk to people, I collect stories, and I feel makes me feel like I'm not so alone. And uh, mm-hmm. a lot of times, people be like, "Yeah, I, I actually, yeah, I have seen something a little weird uh, one time." And whether they want to tell me or not, it was cool that they even said, "Well, yeah, I have had something a little strange this one time." They, they just can't quite place in a certain box or category they just say it was weird yeah. or strange or odd so uh, i think most yeah and that's the beauty that. of it yeah you know part of, the, part of the reason they do the you know the zany book guys they hear people bring up things like that yep. you know like uh they'll tell you something weird that happened to them well i th- i thank you for um for coming on I, lo- I i mean honest to god the once i read the the baby cry thing i was like oh i've had a kind of a, an experience with that and i've heard so many stories about people hearing babies in the woods and it's so mm. messed up it ain't yeah. right it's on my no list so i i appreciate that i'll still probably name it something a little normal not the babies of egg lake so <laughs> <laughs> yeah and and you know the, the funny thing is like i was always skeptical of anybody that had like multiple type things yeah and, you know we talked about like the third eye type thing but right. I mean, I'm in my mid fifties now. So the things happening when I was like four or five years old, that like kind of weird. And then I was probably thirties or so when, uh, early thirties when the campfire thing happened and then nothing at all ever again until just last August when, when that happened at Egg Lake. So I was just scrolling through my site just to find the, what episode it was uh your, maybe your sister would find this interesting and you probably would too it was episode 143 uh the boulders that was when christopher came on to tell of that i do think i remember hearing uh them talk about that i think i was in my garage because i listened to like in the background instead of music now um but yeah i'm gonna go back and listen to that one too and i'll yeah, have I, her listen to it just be interested yeah i'd be interested to see what she thought about that um considering the experience that she had so yeah well, Mark, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Um, you've been with me for almost a couple hours now. I I really appreciate <laughs> I appreciate your time. Well, I, I, yeah, and I, I like that. I, I appreciate that you found those things interesting enough to get back to me. Sometimes you, yeah. when you don't have someone you can regularly bounce your weird stories off of. You know? Yeah, <laughs> I, I I understand that. Believe me, that's why mm. I appreciate when you guys come on because then I get mm. to absorb or this information and bounce some of my ideas off of you guys. So um, it's definitely a two-way street there. Uh, yeah, if, maybe if your sister says anything more or she does get a, a chance to listen to the boulders and then, oh, if you go on another trip and 
you know, hear <laughs> anything interesting. No more damn babies, though. You poor thing. I don't yeah. want you to hear any more babies. That's messed no. up. Babies no, need to... I make them cry enough. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. Gosh. Yeah. Like, there's a scary guy again. He's coming in the room. Mm-hmm. That Maybe that was your payback for all those years of torturing, the, the, the scaring the babies in the ER, huh? Yeah. Well, all right. Thanks so much, Mark. I'll let you get back oh, to your you. uh, your evening there. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Shannon. Thank you. Have a, have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Well, I'm so-and-so. I was given this name by my parents. I've been to such and such a college. I've done these things in my profession. I produce a little bar. The Buddha says, forget it. That's not true. That's some of the story. That's all gone. That's all past. I want to see the real you you are now. Nobody knows who that is, is it? Because we don't uh, know ourselves except through listening to our echoes and consulting our memories. But then there's a real evil, and that again leads us back to this question uh, Who are you? That is the real evil. We shall see how they play with this exam by the cohorts to get you to come out of your shell and find out who you really are.
newspaper and uh, so on. You are not the same person who uh, a little while ago left the platform. If you think you are, you are linking your moments up in the chain. And this is what binds you to the wheel of birth and death. But when you know that every moment in which you are is the only moment, this comes into Zen, a master will say to somebody, oh, get up and walk across the room. And he comes back and he says, where are your footprints? They've gone. So where are you? Who are you? When we are asked who we are, we usually give a kind of recitation of a history. Straight, 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 straight.